Okay, we go on to chapter 3. Okay, uh, chapter 3, let's see what are we... Okay, so types and patterns of innovations. Okay, so in chapter 2, we have discussed about or we have understood about creativity, about innovation, how to cultivate, cultivate innovation, how to cultivate creativity, what are we looking for in innovation, what are we looking for in creativity, and who funds innovation uh, and creativity. But in chapter 3, we are understanding, we are trying to understand how innovation can help or is innovation good for the people. Okay, so this is a story uh, in India, whereby they this these two uh, person here, manufacturer Stuart, Godrich and Broich, okay, decided to make a smaller, cheaper fridge to tap in the market. Okay, why do they do this? Is because the people in India are very poor in certain locations, and they had no money to buy fridge. So these uh, two guys they came up with an idea innovation why not we come up with a small cheaper fridge to help these people so they came out and then they want a lot of innovation and so on so on, the most innovation company and so on and so forth however their assumptions turned out to be wrong okay uh, even though they came up with a lighter portable fridge this is the fridge, eh? uh, but the people, the poor people, did not want to buy this fridge, okay? Because they still could not afford the fridge. So he made this company. These two guys made millions of fridge, but only sold about hundred thousand of fridge, because the poor people did not want to buy the fridge. So the project was a failure. However. They had to restructure the whole marketing strategy of this fridge. So now, rather than they sell this fridge to the poor, they have sold it to the uh, middle class and high income people and it sold. Okay? And make profit. Lah. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is some innovations, it's good, but it's not for that kind of purpose. It's not for those kind of people it's not for that kind of scenario it may be used in a different environment okay it might be used from a different environment so this leads to a theory called the theory of disruptive innovation okay disruptive innovation which uh, says uh, which restricts innovation efforts to a group of specific solutions and technology meaning innovation it only applies to disruptive innovation uh, only applies to certain group of people so what is disruptive innovation or what is the word disruptive okay so disruptive theory means or disruptive product or disruptive application uh, means or <clears throat> can be said like a uh, uber uh, grab uh, jnt uh, shopee so these are all disruptive because they have disrupted the uh, the, the the market okay people go to uh, restaurants to buy food but now you have something disrupting it you have food panda people take taxi now you have uber okay so they are disrupting the uh, market so in disruptive theory innovation they have said that <clears throat> even though the innovation is good but it only appears or it only have certain group of people certain group or not all people will benefit from that all right so these are some questions relating to that kind of innovation okay what are the pros and cons uh, so what this actually what this company did what these two guys in this company did was they did not do a full study on the need of that innovation because uh, people of uh, poor people have other solutions if they do not have fridge mungkin dia orang pakai adalah cara lain okay so now so what i'm trying to say is if you come up with a solution innovation you have to study is there a need 
for the consumers to use this particular product. Okay, so this is what happened to TNB uh, mobile app because customers didn't need to use this app. They had the, because these apps are not be used frequently. Okay, as compared as compared to Maxis mobile app or much um, uh, e-wallet mobile app, these apps you can use it frequently. Contohnya, kalau you nak bayar bill, Maxis, you can go online and Maxis to do the other vouchers, the other promotion. So you can look at the app. Kalau TNB punya app, it's just to see your uh, electricity usage, which you can do uh, on the web, and that's about it. How many people in a day or in a week look at their usage? Not not all. And you want to pay the bill? Yeah, that's only once a month. So the usage is not there. So people did not actually need this app because they have other means of paying their bill. So again, what I'm trying to say here is, even though if you think the innovation is good, valid, strong, you have to see from the consumer point of view, does the consumer need this? Or is there any other products available which the consumer are using or can use? Okay? In this case, this fridge thing, the poor people did not need a fridge. They were not complaining they don't have a fridge because they have other means of ways of keeping the product. Okay? Contohnya, they buy vegetables. So they will consume the vegetables in a week because they know they don't have a fridge. So they have to finish it up within three, four days. Okay? So they, they were not complaining. Okay? They were not complaining. So this company, finally, yes, it did well in selling the fridge. They rebranded the fridge and sold it to the uh, higher income people as a mini bar or something like that. Lah. So, okay. so innovation sometimes can be uh, useful, sometimes it cannot be useful. Okay, so the path of technology follows through time and is still by technology trajectory. So over time, technology changes. Okay, so we look at several dimensions. Okay. To help clarify how innovation offer different opportunities okay so we are looking at technology and innovation in this case okay so some innovation comes in terms of product 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 mobile app so this is a tablet some comes in terms of <coughs> process okay process okay some comes in process some comes in uh, product, contohnya macam post laju service, uh, uh, courier service. Now you can just track your um, your parcel through the, the, the barcode. Okay, so that's a uh, innovation process. Kalau dulu you post your stuff, you don't know, know where your letter is, but now you know because you have that barcode. Okay. Uh, next, we also look at radical and incremental innovation. Some innovations are radical. Radical means tukar je. Radical. Okay. Uh, example, digital photography are more radical innovations for product than Sony. That means radical means that means they cannot adapt it anymore. They cannot. But just Sony started with digital. Kodak did not. Kodak started with the normal film. And then they you ask them to change to digital. They cannot. Okay. So some even the old people, they cannot, they, they have started in the olden days. So for them to change, to radically change, it's going to be very difficult. Okay? So radical uh, innovation means the change is sudden. Okay? This, uh, that means in your organization, organization, if you want to implement a radical change, it's going, you have to consider so many issues. Okay? Because you have started with a non-radical, or what we say as a normal situation okay or you can do it through incremental that means you do it little by little over time okay for example let's say you have uh, your organization has five six seven branches so maybe you start from branch number one branch number two that's how you move on if radical changes means okay how many if I system need okay, so to a system so that's radical okay so some uh, examples of uh, examples of radical uh, innovation 
is the calculator. Okay, actually, this uh, Q foot and as a slide ruler, I mean, slide ruler ni was the calculator before this calculator came out. Okay, so some organizations when they they can uh, advance because they have the competence enhancing because they have started, so they enhance, enhance, enhance. Some competence destroying because they have not started with this. Over time, they have this another product comes in. Okay, that's what happened to product. Over some somebody else came in digital, they couldn't stay ahead. Habis Nokia. Some somebody came up with a smartphone and habis. Okay. All right. So we also have architectural and component innovation. A component innovation uh, changes to more on one component. Okay, you change the component only. Okay. Uh, like how they say in this example, you put a gel field, field material to a bicycle seat. Now, in the bicycle, you only need to cut the cut, the apunya seat side. Component, you took up. Okay, a component side you took up. All right. Uh, at the uh, color architectural design, you change the overall design, but it is still the same thing. Bicycle, the top bicycle, but you change the overall design of the bicycle. Okay. So again, if you apply this to your organization, maybe you only change a simple, a simple innovation, a simple process. You do okay. Let's say you have about ten lines of process, but you only change a little bit, because sometimes a little innovation change can save you time and money in your organization. Okay, but sometimes you do an architectural innovation, and you change it overall. But actually, you're doing the same thing. Okay, change it overall, but actually, you're doing the same thing. All right. And then we also have the S curve. The S curve means you have your performance and you have your effort, and this is technology. Okay, so over time, performance and effort increases. Okay, and this is it goes up through uh, technology. Okay, technology improves slowly at first because it's poorly understood. Okay, then it accelerates as understanding increases, then it tapers off and approaches limit. That means over the, this is over technology. So as you understand technology, as the technology performance increases, people will start using it more and more and more and more. Okay, and more and more and more. Now technology is at still. So most of us are here. Next, maybe they have a new phone, then you will start a new S. Uh, for example, you have a computer dulu lah. Computer dulu yang Pentium tu, yang contoh naik. Tiba-tiba, you -tiba, iPad. So, if iPad cannot sambung from here, you can start a new one. Uh, because it's a new set of technology. Sama juga dengan TV. You started with a plasma kot. Plasma lah kot. Plasma, and then LCD, and then took another one LED, and then another one smart TV, and then Android TV. It goes on and on and on. But the S does not go, the S stops somewhere and then they sambung another S pula. Okay. It switches, switches, switches. Okay. Uh, technology do not always get to reach their limits, may be displaced by new discontinued technology. That means each technology does not reach their limit. I'm by limit technology. That means it's not fully utilized, tapi ada something new dah masuk dah. Example switching from carbon copying uh, photocopy to vinyl recording to compact disc. Okay, that means people have not used the old technology till the end. Tapi keluar teknologi baru terus yang lama tak dipakai. Uh, dulu kita pakai tape and then we use uh, CD and now itu pun tak ada. We just listen on YouTube and download music and so on. Okay, <coughs> sama juga macam Netflix. Netflix is also now going to discontinue technology because people are already fed up. People, people are tahu dah. Alah, syek-syek, ulang cerita ni. Syek-syek, ulang cerita ni. That's why now you see you have Disney, uh, Disney Smart, sorry, Disney Star. But all this, uh, uh, those days, actually why this Disney started and all this started is because when Netflix started, all these companies had to put their movies inside Netflix. Tetapi, over time, they figure out, eh, 
kenapa aku tak start sendiri? So now Disney pun dah start its own Netflix. So semua movie-movie Disney daripada dia masuk Netflix, dia dah masuk kat sini. So soon you will see more and more uh, types of Netflix available nanti. And eventually so I, I think Netflix will just try to sustain and you know, susah juga lah tu. Okay. Uh, S curve, okay, this you can read on all these are some F curves. Uh, what I need you to look is okay, this one here. Okay, so um, Anderson and Touchman also found that technology change proceeds cyclically. Uh, what it means here is when technology discontinues, that means the habit of continue, then be between the continuation dengan a new, it goes through, okay, macam ni lah. Let's say you come up here and this is the end of the plasma TV or LCD TV. And then daripada sini, pusingan ini actually going to the LED TV. So when it goes through the LED process TV, before it comes to the discontinue, it goes through these three or two eras design competition and substitution and it goes it into the elaboration of domain design okay domain design so what does that mean that means because we have stopped in lcd now we are moving to the led tv again so you will have a lot of people changing to the new kind of design that means people who uh, produces movie pun mereka pun harus tukar juga when we change into digital format, kan? So the movie producers pun kena adapt to that situation. So that's why they had the era kat sini, the, the age kat sini. So design pun akan berubah lah. The TV design will be changing, okay? But actually it's all all about LCD, okay? Uh, LED. Tapi ada design yang macam ni, ada design kecil, ada design besar. Okay, so many designs. And these design will be substituting, akan ubah. I can substitute the old design. And when it comes down here, the domain design selected. That means over time, let's say, um, let's say uh, LCD TV habis pada tahun, tahun 2000. So between 2000 and 2005, you get new designs coming out. New design lah. Designs. Bila sampai 2010, designs semua dah sama dah. That means there is no more new designs. There's no more new design, design tu je. That means you go to, uh, uh, kalau pergi kerai TV pun, design ni kotak, square, curve, macam tu, macam tu. Okay? And then, bila dia turun from 2010, dia naik balik dari 2010 to 2020. Now, the design pula, they, talk, they will start to elaborate. Maybe elaborate on the design. Mula-mula design tu stop for a while. And then, because they know the new technology is coming, they start to elaborate on the design. Okay, elaborate means, that means they start to add on, okay, the size of the TV. And for the next 10 years, the design start to bertambah and automatically it will stop again, discontinue balik because there's a new technology coming up. Okay, so this is the period they are going. So all technological innovation will go through this period. Okay, will go through this period. And for the inspection. And this cycle can be within actually less than five years. Sometimes less than five years, sometimes even more, less than that. Okay? When they start already, you do not know when it is. That's why now, um, mobile companies are giving phones for every two years because the phones keep changing. I mean, the services keep changing or sometimes the mobile apps keep changing sometimes. Uh, you think that, oh, for me, cukup lah untuk my, my usage. But actually, after a certain period of time, the phone starts to hang, uh, the pictures are not stored well. Okay, it's not because of the phone. Eh? Phone tu tak rosak phone, actually. Mungkin battery lah. But actually, because of the mobile apps, of the usage and everything else, that's, that's changing. That's why the phone also needs to be upgraded. Okay? Okay, so this is a very short uh, chapter, okay. So, some of the discussion questions. Okay, what are some reasons that established firms might resist in, 
adoption of new technology. Think of an example of innovation that you have studied at school or work. Okay, so these are the things you do. All right, so. Uh, tadi saya kata akan bagi individual assignment yang pertama kan? Uh, bukan hari ini tapi saya tukarlah. Okay. So today we will have your individual assignment. So this is your individual assignment. Uh, you are supposed to submit this uh, by next Sunday. Okay, next Sunday. Uh, you can uh, choose three questions from these questions. Uh, Apa-apa tiga soalan and provide me with examples. Example itu can come from your organization. Kalau boleh, your organization lah. Kalau tak boleh, you can use any other organization based on your understanding and your reading. Okay? So, uh, each question, I need at least one page. Okay? Satu soalan, satu page, double spacing. Eh? Double spacing. Okay? At least minimum, kalau nak buat dua page pun tak ada masalah. But each question, one page and double spacing. Okay, so let's say you answer three questions, remember you have to answer three questions. So you answer question uh, one, four and six. So you tulis soalan dalam paper tu and then you answer the question accordingly and make sure it's within one page or if you feel it's needed to be more than that, go ahead. So a minimum student akan hantar dalam tiga page you can go up to proper page you know, tak masalah. So I need you to choose three questions from this, uh, from this uh, slide over here. Okay, this slide you can also get it in your, your new future, chapter three. Okay, three questions eh, from this slide. And, and you need to submit this question, uh, these answers before our Sunday class next week. Okay before our Sunday class next week. I will uh, give you a Google Drive and I will give you instructions on how to submit your uh, assignments, okay? Your, assignment, your individual assignment, okay? Uh, just uh, make sure all your assignments are in PDF format, eh? Okay. All right, so that's for today. That's for this chapter and the last chapter for today Uh, doktor? Ya, yes, yes, ada soalan. Uh, yes. Berkenaan dengan assignment tadi, uh, kena run plagiat ke? Oh, no, no, no. This one no need yet. This one no need. Tak ada Ini tak payah. Ini belum ada tertentu ya. Okay, so uh, references semua kena ada ke? Tak yes, refer uh, uh, references. Uh, references no need because these are very simple questions. Tak perlu reference. No need reference. Okay, faham doktor. Thank you. Uh, if you have any pictures, any graph, uh, you masukkan sekali ya. Eh? Contohnya, you nak tunjuk graph ke from taken from somewhere ke, boleh, tak masalah. Okay. But you don't, uh, for this individual assignment, <coughs> there is no need of any, um, uh, any tadi in yet. Itu, uh, saya nak untuk your group and your final, uh, your group case study and your final case study, uh, sorry, uh, lah, case study group and your final project, uh, itu kena ada, uh, ni lah, kena ada tadi in. Okay. Okay, so here we looked at standards, battle, mo mo modernity and platform competition. So when we talk about platform, we are talking about mobile lah. Okay, mobile platform. Okay, so mobile platform, mobile payments. So we start with talking about mobile payment. How mobile payment help people around the world. That means they just use their um, phone to do their payment. This was very good in places like in Africa and India because people were, uh, they had their own system which is called the M-Pesa because people were unbanked and underbanked. <laughs> this is a very interesting term. Unbanked means because people were so poor, sampai there is no need of having a bank. Dah duit pun tak ada, or duit pun tak banyak, why do you need to have a bank? You know, so that was, they were so poor that they don't need to have a bank. And some people were so rich, but they did not use their bank services. So they were considered underbanked. 
So, in these two countries, they started a mobile payment service whereby you can use a mobile uh, payment service even if you do not have a bank. Even if you do not have a bank account, you can use their service. That means you just use it, you give cash or you give, uh, you deposit, oh, sorry, you give cash over a counter or something like that, but you're actually using a service. Okay? It, it's like this lah. Maksudnya, macam COD lah. Macam COD. That means you still use the system, tapi you buy pakai cash. Okay? Oh. Yes, yes. Kan ni macam e-wallet? It's e-wallet, correct. Tapi e-wallet ini uh, datang daripada bank kan? Maksudnya you kena top up melalui bank kan? Hmm. Uh, yang ini dia e-wallet yang you bagi duit. Uh, bagi duit. Contohnya macam mana? Contohnya macam uh, kita beli kredit lah. Kita beli kredit macam tu. Ah, uh, Kita beli kredit. Top up tu. Ya, yeah, top up macam tu. Uh, you go to the shop, you buy cash, you dapat kredit. And then you use the credit lah. You guna credit tu. Uh, so this this was very good in this kind of uh, countries whereby you are unbanked because orang terlalu miskin and then they had they had money but they had no money not not enough money to keep in the bank. Maksudnya dia orang uh, they were like um like guys pagi makan pagi lah. Tak cukup makan lah. Tak cukup makan lah. So so in this service they were able to still use that means contohnya bila saya tengok ni contohnya they can use a prepaid credit card macam uh, tu. Faham tak? Prepaid credit card. Uh, so, they will just go uh, to a place and purchase a credit card and put in some money and they use it. Uh, and underbank. Underbank is maksudnya they have money in their bank but they don't use it, uh, they don't use the bank services to the fullest. Okay? Uh, macam neighbor saya lah. Dia ada duit, dia ada dalam bank. Tapi they don't, he doesn't use uh, online banking, he doesn't transfer online, he just needs to go in their pocket ATM service je. Uh, macam tu. Okay. So mobile payment system that cuts out the credit card companies could potentially save billions of dollars because of the same fees. So when they started this mobile payment, it actually reduces people from using credit cards. Okay. Uh, yeah, obviously credit card too, you don't have to have money, the credit card. But some people like to use a mobile payment service need because the fees are very low and the mobile system gives you uh, points or gives you some discounts. Okay, betul. It gives you a lot of discount. Uh, macam Tesco, for example, sorry, macam e-wallet, apa tu, uh, Tachengo. You know, sometimes you have discounts like if you spend more than 80 ringgit in Tesco, you dapat 3 ringgit. You know, these small things, but over time, it's a, it's a lot. Okay, it's a lot. So these were some of the new age mobile uh, payment service. So again, people were asking, what are the advantages? Because some advantages, yes, in developed country, but in developing country, apa advantages? So, like macam tadi tu, yang developing countries, unbanked tu bagus lah. That means you can still use bank services, even if you don't have a bank. Okay. Uh, things like that lah. Alright. So how many industries experience strong pressure to select a single or dominant design? There are multiple dimensions shaping which technology rises to the position of dominant design. Firm strategies can influence several of these dimensions enhancing the likelihood of their technologies rising to domains. Okay. So sometimes when you want in your organization, when you want to change something, it has to be of a standard design. Okay, standard design. That means what are people comfortable of? Okay, people are comfortable of using uh, their mobile phone. So you have to design your mobile app in your organization based on mobile technology. Okay, let's say you're running, uh, let's say, you are okay. I'm making it up with Sheila. The year Kijan and Shabbos. So let's say Shabbos wants to do a mobile enhanced mobile app service. So they have to consider what is the latest trend or latest technology, which is mobile app. Lah. Okay, next they have to consider what does the customer want to 
to with this mobile app. Okay, they have to put that. That is their domain. That means customer wants to do this. Customer wants to do this. Customer wants to see this. Because it's no point if you create a mobile app or a product or a service if there's no one using it, or if there's no one using it for uh, for everyday use. Okay. If they is only going to use it for once a month, then there's no point now. Okay, so again, you have to consider all this. Okay, so there is also something which is called the learning curve. As, <coughs> as technology is used, producers learn to make it more efficient and effective. Okay, so, and decrease the cost. So over time, I pet mahal and murah uh, Tapi iPad kalau dipakai dengan example ni sebab dia akan keluar dengan model baru, model baru kan. So we cannot use this. Tapi uh, we can use it for example kalau macam thumb drive. Huh. Thumb drive started as a very expensive thing. Now it's very cheap. Okay. Some of you got in terms of performance. You start with a very low performance and then you increase your performance. Okay. That is how technology is. Okay. So over time when a technology becomes more valuable, the more it is being adopted okay uh two primary sources are learning effects and network externalities it means you have to see how much it affects people and how much uh, the network is that means how much is affecting others as well okay because you have to understand in your organization your uh, your department the more you use something or the more you change something, it's going to affect another another person, another product, another service. Okay, so the more, because you have to understand your organization has been there for a very long period of time. Okay, kalau you pergi yang dekat, um, siapa yang kerja kat Bemban tu, apa nama company tu, hilang tu? Uh, Murata. Mo, mo, Murata. Murata. Okay, Murata. <laughs> Morata has their own, I'm sure they have their own principles, their own um, uh, their own uh, line of work. Lah, okay, so if you were to introduce something new, it has to be more efficient. It has to be lagi baik dengan apa yang dia ada. Tapi Morata ni Japanese company ke? Yeah, betul. Ah, Japanese company, dia adalah dia punya, what do you say, dia punya... Uh, values dia kan. So it has to be uh, in line with their values pun. Okay, it has to be in line with their values. It cannot be in line with their values is very important lah. Okay? So again, in your organization, a change should be based on a Japanese value lah. Okay, it cannot be based on uh, suka -suka, tak boleh, tentu. it has to be based on the organization itself. And it has to be based on experience, it has to be based on knowledge, okay? Suggest that technology adopted earlier than others are likely to become better developed, making it difficult for other technologies to, ca to catch up, okay? So siapa, what they're trying to say is, if you adopt early, then you are better there. The longer you wait, the longer it's going to take, or the, the more difficult it's going to take. So that's why when COVID happened, it was it's actually a wake up call to everyone i think it's a wake up call because people change or organization change over time overnight got over time overnight hari ni you pergi kerja esok you kerja daripada rumah okay uh, you you do everything at home now okay you you have you you, you work from home kids learn that me so i'm i cannot foresee how things will be in the future but i assume that the future is going to be very different because this work from home me will be here i think for almost forever okay and we hope that inshallah nanti bila covid dah habis semua orang boleh balik kerja tapi akan ada beberapa this work from home culture ni akan will continue lah i think will continue okay will continue and maybe you can see people who are will be at home lah and i think uh, so I, I, I read over the internet, some organizations are giving startup money, startup capital untuk home office. Meaning, they are going to you 3,000 to 4,000 ke, okay, you need to wait untuk start your home office. 
mungkin nak beli laptop ke, you nak beli printer ke, go ahead. And every month, they akan bagi you $50 untuk internet ke, untuk whatever lah, $50. Okay dah, tu je. So you work from home, eh? macam tu. Because they know they are saving a lot. Kalau you datang kerja, they have to pay for your room, they have to sediakan bilik, they have to sediakan laptop untuk you, uh, they have to pay the electricity bill untuk that division. Okay? So now they only cost tu, dia orang letak tempat lain, they just give you 3,000. Okay, uh, yang ni, 3,000 ni, you do lah whatever you want. You buy a laptop, you buy a printer, you buy a gaming chair, a couple. You sit at home and you work. Okay, every month untuk uh, uh, duit support internet you, we give you $50. Okay, okay. that's all you do. Okay, network externality. That means you are looking at why a dominant design is selected because of its network externality. That means this particular uh, design is well established and it's common to everyone. Okay. Many people choose to use Windows in order to maximize the number of people their files are compatible with and the range of software application they can use. Okay, so you do not want to choose a product or service which is not compatible with others. Okay, which is not compatible with others. So again, kalau you are an organization, kalau you are IT department, you buy a server couple, okay? you have to see if that particular hardware is compatible dengan your network. You are the macam mana sekali network phone, but if you, sorry, you are the beli product mahal-mahal phone, but if your network is that slow, that slow, you know, you go. Okay, yeah, slow, you know, you go. Okay. I, saya beli TV besar-besar phone, but if I don't have internet service at home, I cannot still watch Netflix. Okay, so somewhere you got an organization in order for you to change some services. But if your network is not stable, then there's no point. Okay, so in this terms, the company choose a design which is acceptable worldwide, acceptable by others. So they can connect with another division. Okay, so kalau they choose, let's say they pakai another service, another product yang which other companies cannot get it, so there's no point lah. Alright, there's no point. Why dominance are selected? A technology with large install base attracts developers and complementary goods. A technology with a wide range of complementary goods attracts users increasing stock base. Okay, meaning, okay, because you are using the same type of technology that the others use, so you are going to attract more people to come to your uh, product. Okay, reinforce them. Let's say you develop a new product on Android, and you know there are a lot of Android customers, so you attract people as well. Okay, you attract people. Okay, a uh, little bit on theory. Microsoft didn't have a personal computer operating system. It was dominant. It was a different operating system. Okay. So later, only when they find out that they, it was a need, so they spearheaded an operating system, which is called the MS-DOS. So now they are more into... Because when Microsoft started, they only had a personal computer, but their operating system was not, domi uh, was not dominant. So they started an operating system and they became dominant by selling. That means, it's as if macam lah, you jual PC, you jual sekali dengan dia punya. That means orang tak payah pergi cari uh, software daripada ini. Uh, everything is all inside here. Everything is inside here. You don't have to go and install it. So. Okay? Alright. Uh, yang lain tu, nothing much. Uh, yep, nothing much to me. Uh, Okay, this is all. This is all. This is all you can do on your own. Okay, all right. So we'll stop here for today. We'll stop our lecture here for today. Uh, don't uh, don't forget to submit the chapter three tadi tu. Ini uh, chapter tadi tadi. Okay, chapter three. Where was the question? This time. 
chapter 3 page 22 okay so uh, choose three questions individual uh, and uh, <coughs> one question one page double spacing uh, okay double spacing and if you want to use a diagram go ahead color you know answer more than one page one go ahead uh, and to be submitted before the start of next sunday class okay before the start of next sunday class so next Sunday's class will start at 9.30. So before that, we, we have to submit before that. Okay? Hello, hello. Uh, okay, yeah, you feature, eh? Sorry, sorry. Uh, can you, can I, apa ni, apa ni yang ni? Tak dengar tadi. Submit via you feature, eh? Uh, ah, tak, tak. Nanti saya bagi link. Uh, saya akan bagi link and then you just upload your assignments dalam link tu. Okay, thank you. Uh, make sure all your writings to be convert for the PDF. Eh? Okay, all right. Uh, I think that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much. Do not forget to sign my attendance, and then uh, entrance survey. Pun, make sure you do your entrance survey. Uh, yep, yeah, that's all for today. Thank you so much for attending. Selamat pagi, selamat